Hi everybody, in this video I want to do some examples of using our original and derived right hand rules to find the direction of the magnetic field produced by various uh, currents and moving charges. So here are the four problems that I want to do. First here, we've got a current going through this wire to the left and we want to find the direction of the magnetic field that that current produces here and here. Secondly, I've got a negative charge moving to the left and I want to know the direction of the magnetic field that that moving charge produces here and here. Thirdly, I have a current going into the board. So imagine I've got a wire like this, current going this way into the board. The little X represents like the tail feathers of the current vector. So the current's going into the board and we want to find the direction of the magnetic field that this current produces here and here and here. And finally, we have a loop of current. So we have current going in the loop. It's driven by some battery, for example, that's not shown. So the current's going this way, and we want to find the direction of the magnetic field that this current produces at the center of the loop. So these are all examples that have been done or illustrated in other videos, but I want to blow through all these quickly uh, right here in one shot. Uh, all right, so actually what you should do is try to do these yourself right now. So pause the video, take a minute to try and do these, and then I'll go over them. All right, so here we go, pause. All right, so we're back and let's go over these problems. All right, so I've got a current uh, flowing to the left. So the derived right-hand rule we find for, we use for finding the direction of the magnetic field produced by a current segment is to stick the thumb of our right hand in the direction of the current. The fingers wrap around in the direction of the magnetic field. Now, remember the magnetic field lines basically make circles around the current. So if this is the current, the magnetic field li lines make circles. The, the purpose of the right-hand rule, of this derived right-hand rule, is just to determine whether do we follow the circles this way or do we follow the circles that way. So, thumb in the direction of the current, fingers are into the board up here. So up here, the magnetic field is in. I'm going to use little X's to represent in for the direction of the magnetic field. B is in up here. Now, behind the wire, the magnetic field will be down. Below the wire, the magnetic field will be out. Also, I'll represent out with little dots. It's like we're looking at the tip of the arrow of the magnetic field vector. So B is out. Uh, and just to complete the picture, right here, the magnetic field would be up. So again, you've got to use your right hand. If you use your left hand, you'll get everything exactly backwards. All right, great. So that's the first example. All right, moving to our next example, we consider a negative charge moving to the left. Now we know that one way we could solve this is we can just think of this negative charge moving to the left. Uh, we could think of it in terms of the equivalent current. Well. In terms of currents, negative charges moving to the left are equivalent to positive charges moving to the right. So if we think of this as a current, we actually have a current to the right. Stick the thumb of our right hand in the direction of the current. Fingers wrap around in the direction of the magnetic field. So anywhere up here, the magnetic field should be out. And anywhere down here, the magnetic field should be in. B is out. And down here, magnetic field is in everywhere here and here, including those. So up here, magnetic field is out. Down here, wrap the fingers around, magnetic field is in. Now, instead of using the derived right-hand rule for currents, we could use the native right-hand rule in the cross product for this magnetic field law for the magnetic field produced by a charge moving with velocity v. So to do that, we have to use this natively. We need to draw r hat unit vectors from the charge to the locations of interest of the magnetic field. So let's do the, this uh, red question mark first. I've got to evaluate this cross product. So using my right hand, fingers of my right hand in the direction of the first vector, curl them into the direction of the r hat unit vector, the second vector of the cross product, thumb points in the direction of V cross R hat, which is in. Now, out here, mu naught, four pi, R squared, all those things are positive, but the charge Q producing the magnetic field is negative. So 
for the magnetic field direction up here, I've got the negative of in, which is out. So that checks out. All right, let's do, let's do the same process to find the direction of the magnetic field at the location of the blue question mark. All right, so again, we have to evaluate this cross product, V cross R hat, but now R hat is the unit vector pointing from the charge that's producing the magnetic field to the location that we want to know the magnetic field. So this is the uh, unit separation vector between the charge and the field point. All right, so here we go. Stick the fingers of our right hand in the direction of the velocity, the first vector in the cross product. Curl them into the direction of r hat. Thumb points out in the direction of v cross r hat for this field point. So we've got out. Meanwhile, that's positive, that's positive, that's positive, but the charge producing the magnetic field is negative. So all this out here overall is negative. I've got the negative of out is in. So the magnetic field here is into the board. The magnetic field here is out of the board. We've done that two different ways by using our native cross product that's in the actual force law or by using the derived right hand rule uh, and treating this negative charge moving to the left as a rightward flowing current. All right, on to the next example. We're again now down here considering a current, but we're considering a current into the board. So that's this little x means we're like looking at the tail feathers of the current vector, which is going into the board. That's the view we're looking at. All right, now we know magnetic fields basically make circles around the, the currents uh, that produce them. So the question is, is you know, does it, does it go this way, this way, this way, or does it go that way, that way, that way? The right hand rule tells us which way. So we've got to use our right hand. We're going to use our derived right hand rule for the directions of magnetic fields produced by currents. So stick the thumb of your right hand in the direction of the current. Fingers wrap around in the direction that the magnetic field must be uh, pointing. So up here, the magnetic field is this way. Right here, the magnetic field is this way. Right here, the magnetic field is that way. Now, sometimes things can get a little bit sloppy. To help you get the directions right, remember that at any point we could draw a line like from the wire up to here. The magnetic field's got to be perpendicular to that. That's what it means for something to make a circle around something is that if you drop a radius to the center of the circle, you need to be perpendicular to that circle. All right, so just to summarize, since the current is into the board, stick the thumb of your right hand in the direction of the current. Fingers will give you the sense in which the magnetic field lines are wrapping around. And we get that result. Now, if the current were out, if it were out, it would all be reversed. All right, so we have, we have one more that's left. In this case, we've got a current loop. There's a couple ways to do this. We could use the right-hand rule, the derived right-hand rule for a segment of current and look at a representative, couple of representative segments of this loop. Or we can use the right-hand rule, another derived right-hand rule that's specially for loops. So we're going to do it both ways. All right, so let's, let's use the right-hand rule for a current segment producing a magnetic field at first. So this current going like this, I mean, that means you know, I've got a current this way, I've got the same current this way. Right here I've showed it wrapping, but you know, at any given point the current would be this way, and right here, you know, the current is that way. So let's just look at a couple of those representatively. I'm going to stick, let's use this one. I'm going to stick my thumb in the direction of the current, thumb of my right hand. Fingers will wrap around in the direction of the magnetic field contribution from this little chunk of current, this little segment of current right here. Thumb, fingers, so as they wrap around, they come out through the center of the loop. So this, using the right-hand rule uh, for production of magnetic fields due to a current segment, we get out for the direction of the magnetic field right here due to this little chunk. Well, so the question is, do they cancel out or do they all you know, work together? Well, let's try one more. Stick the thumb in the direction of this current, and this, the current in this little segment, fingers wrap around, oh, at the center of the loop, they also come out. And you could do that for any segment along here. You're going to get that the contribution of the magnetic field at the center of the loop is out. Uh, so the magnetic field is out. B 
is out at the center of the loop. Now, there's another right hand rule we can use. This is a special derived right hand rule only for loops. You, this is optional, but here's how it works. You use your fingers of your right hand, you sort of curl them, like have them follow in the sense of the current. So the current's going around this way. You know, have your fingers follow that. Your thumb will point at the direction of the magnetic field at the center of the loop. It's so special just for the center of the loop. All right, so that right hand rule, thumb is pointing out, uh, agrees with the other way we calculated the direction of the magnetic field. All right, so that's an example. If you need a more detailed explanation about how all these right hand rules have emerged, I have another video on that and I refer you to that. Uh, so hopefully this example will be helpful. Uh, the only way to get good at doing these types of problems and to really understand them is just to do multiple problems and keep practicing. All right, thanks for your attention.